Yes, welcome. Okay. Welcome to BBM Black Up Lips. I'm looking thank forward to you. this today. Yes. Thank you, thank you. I'm very, I, you know, I mean, I really appreciate the fact that you asked me. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, um, I've got two teenage boys and like, you know, they they think it's a real big deal. You know, but as I do, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, no, I, um, the thing is I've been watching your pages. Actually, I think it was my, someone in my circle who, who follows you. Right. And I, and I saw you posting stuff. I was like, yo, this guy's he's, he's clued in, man. He's clued in. He's got his little, you know, black, like little black Wall Street going on, man. I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking about. So I was like, I've got to get you yeah. on because obviously Black Up Lips is about empowering black people and pushing us up a little bit. Not exclusively, but, you know, I yeah, like to yeah. offer black people a chance to, to be a bit more exposed like in a, in a positive way, you know, because at the moment, you know how it is with us, you know, we're just like, if we do something bad, they blow it up. But yeah. If we do something good, it's like, it, it weren't him, it weren't him, it was yeah. somebody else. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, man. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Black, Mr. Pro-Black <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> Where are you from? You're from yes. London, aren't you? You're from, you're from yeah, South London, yeah, Gap. yeah, yeah, South London, South London, man. London born and bred. Um, um, parents, Barbados. You know what oh, I mean? Nice. Um, wife Jamaican, uh, boy, my two sons and um, my two daughters. You know what I mean? So like, you know, I've got teenagers, got groans, you know. But I just think it's important to um, represent. You know what I mean? Especially, especially for boys, they need yeah. to. See, they need to see that. You know what I mean? It's like um, there's there's black men out there who are not as really? represented by the press. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so I, I don't want to talk about sort of like, you know, black fathers being absent or whatever sort of thing, because that's like a different subject. But it's kind of like it is it is just important, important for them to see someone representing them. And, you know, it's um, everything that I do, everything that you see on my website. I mean, quite literally, pretty much everything is done by me. So the website's designed by me. All the content's designed by me. Or every word that you see is done by me, and it's it's really important that I feel that the things that I put out are positive and pro-black. And to me, it's kind of like it's like leaving a, leaving a legacy because yeah. everything you put everything you put out digitally, you don't know how long it's going to stay up there, sort of thing. So I just think myself that it could be in a month's time, or a year's time, or ten years' time that someone sees something that I created. And they go, yeah, you know, that's that's all good. That's that's what being pro black is all about, and that's yeah. pretty much it, really. Uh, you know what? Uh, just before we actually get to nitty gritty of pro black, I just want to touch on something about black fathers because this is obviously like there's a stigma that follows uh, black men. To be honest, yeah. I saw a study recently that it's actually not really black men anymore who do who like fit into this whole. Uh, discrimination that we leave our, our our wives and stuff. Now, I don't know if that's because we've like decided that we're all going to go into mixed relationships. Now we decided to be more, a bit more commitment committed to like the, mm-hmm. you know the other race. But uh, black fathers were probably that was like a genera- that was like a couple of generations ago. I don't know if it was really your generation. I think it was just yeah, after yeah, your yeah. generation. Yeah, no, your I gen- mean, I mean, I mean, I would say so. I mean, yeah, I mean. I've been married for 22 years, coming up 22 years. Mm. But, have, but having and I've got two teenage boys from 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 that marriage. Having yeah. said that, I've got two grown daughters from a relationship I had before. Yeah. And also, yeah. and obviously I didn't spend as much time with their mother. So yeah. I kind of I kind of understand where people, yeah, you know I mean, sort of ha- how some people may think about that or think about that 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 mm. subject. But I mean, like me personally, I just think to myself like I got a second chance to to yeah, yeah. Do it, to do it right, yeah. and you know, what I mean, again, that's sort of going back to yeah, you know I mean, I'm just trying to do my best. It's like you can't please everybody, and you can't be all things to everybody. Yeah. But the way I look at it is, if you're true to yourself, then those around you will be brought in, as it were. You know, it's like if you're happy, everyone else is happy. You know, so. I, I get it. I understand it. There are some, you know, I mean, you know, some fathers out there who do just give up, as it were, you know, yeah, for yeah. for whatever reason. But yeah. um, you know, um, like I said, personally, I just think to myself, I got a second chance, 
and I'm trying to do it right. And I said, I'm 22 years in, got two teenage boys. They're a struggle. I mean, I've got to be, <laughs> I've got to be there, you know? I mean, I mean, like, you laugh, you laugh, but I mean, I, I, I wish I could show you. I mean, like in the last, well, go last week and then two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, they had the thing in Hyde Park. Yeah, where, where, where the boy, where the boy got attacked. Yeah. So my yeah. old, so my oldest son, sixteen, he mm. was there the day before. Yo. And never been there before. Went there with a group of friends. Mm. He said he was there ten minutes before. A group of black boys approached them. There's six of them, but another yeah. group approached them and asked them where they're from. Now, I mean, you're in Hyde Park. I mean, no one's from Hyde yeah. Park. Yeah. So why are you asking me where, where am I from? You know? Mm -hmm. But uh, long story short, they they took a Gucci or something or some designer hat off of one of his friends yeah. and basically showed showed their weapons and said, if you want it, come and get it. Yep. And that's... Is that how they're going on? Sorry? Is that how they're going on in this country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Literally, just like for no, they don't know you. They're just, yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was them who done the attack the following day, yeah. Because it just seems, you know. Yeah. And then, and then again, I say having teenage boys. I'm coming. I'm coming home on Friday. I mean, I mm -hmm. haven't put this on Facebook or anything yet because I didn't know how to how to approach it, and I didn't didn't really want to sort of like put my son out there. But coming home. I'm driving by on my road. I've just turned onto my road and I'm driving by and I see six, seven policemen, I think three vans, two cars in a van mm. with a young black boy. Yeah. They're surrounded, but the boy is taller than them yeah. <laughs> and my boy is tall. So I thought myself, you know, let me just turn around and come back because like, even if it isn't my son, it's still like, it seems like over Somebody. the top. You yeah. know, black like, have so many policemen. This is, this is only Friday. So okay. I turn around, I come back, and yes, it's my son. Jesus They've got Christ. six, seven policemen with my son in handcuffs, bear in mind, in handcuffs, and they've got his bicycle with him. Mm. And um, I said to them, you know, obviously, why? And they said, well, he fits the description. Of course. Always oh, yeah. the same thing, man. And I said, what's the description? Well, he's got a black bike, and he's dressed in, and he's dressed in black. Black, yeah, yeah. And I said to him, <laughs> I said to them, I said to them, to be fair, guys, I said to them, I said, like, all six of you, I said, all six of you are dressed in black. Black air. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> and, and, and I said, like, for you, it's like an official uniform. But for young black boys or young boys in general nowadays, dressing in black is kind of like an unofficial uniform. They mm. all do. And to, and to be fair, as a parent, you don't mind because like, it just makes washing easier, you know? So yeah. it's kind of like... <laughs> So, so I saw a comment that was like, you've got to have a better excuse than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, he said, and he says, well, he wouldn't tell me his name. Oh. You know what I mean? And I said, well, okay, this is what his name is. So um, please, yeah. uncom please um, um, take the handcuffs from my son. Yeah. And like, he'd, like one of them was going, no, 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 no. We're not taking it off until, until this is cleared up. So I said to him, look, there's a padlock on the bike. I have the key to the padlock on me, on my keys. Yeah. You would think that he would just believe me. I just yeah. showed him the nah. keys. No, he took the keys from me mm. and unlocked the padlock to prove that it was his bike or my bike and then gave it back. And then they took off the handcuffs and released him. N nothing more said. You know what I mean? And that was yeah. it. I said, a young black boy just riding his bike, you know, a few hundred yards from his house. He's mm. black and he's got a black bike. And they yeah. stopped him. Yeah. It's you know, crazy. It's, it's just crazy. This is, this is this is the world we live in. And it's 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 frightening. You know, it's um, it's like you know, you got on, on the one hand, you got you've been attacked by other by by, by your own. Yeah. You know I mean? And then, then on the, the other hand, you got you got, got the police. Yeah. Oh just, yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. In like a two week period. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's hard. It's hardcore being um a black youth. You know, it's mm. kind of weird because I remember when I was young too, man. I remember some kid holding us up, trying to take some stuff off us, but we didn't have anything. So you know. You didn't get nothing. And and I remember just thinking, what, what was that about? What what is it? Is it like a pride thing? Is it a power thing? Is it is it just like fun for them? I don't know. But I'm wondering who is raising these people? Who are telling these guys, look, go and rob somebody. That'll be fun. Go and I kill somebody. It, personally, I think it's it's a generational thing. Again, like this may come across wrong in in, in some eyes. However, when I, I I'm born here, so like I mean I'm 60 years old. I was born here. No, so I can tell you, 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But I can tell you that when, when I was a teenager, you know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, how should I put it? You never robbed your own. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, it, it was just it was just the rule. Like, you never robbed your own. You know what I mean? It's like, it just, you know what I mean? It's like, basically, like, like we're all poor anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, we're not going to rob from each other sort of thing. Yeah. And it's only... I would say that probably going into the 80s and 90s that you started seeing things like this where black kids are robbing black kids or robbing, yeah. you know what I mean, like, like mugging an old black woman. I mean, that, that would be like unheard of. I mean, yeah. in, in my day, if you mugged an old black woman and you got caught, oh man, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you, you'd be in trouble, you know what I mean? Yeah. But now it's kind of like there's, like there's no rules. There's like, I suppose it's like, Talking about like 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 the old gangsters with like the craze and whatever. Yeah. They were talking about them and the yeah, there were rules that that the rules of engagement sort of thing, like you know. But mm -hmm. now with kids, there's 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 no rules. I mean, like they're yeah. stabbing each other, yeah, they're you know, stealing from each other. Mm -hmm. And why? You know, it's like you know, it's like we're all in the same boat. I mean, it's like none of us are. You know, it's like none of us are rich. None of us are none of us are flaunting. And yeah. anything, anything you have, you work for. You know what I mean, I will say to my boys, I said, like you own nothing. So mm -hmm. everything you have was given to you by someone who worked for it. Whether it's me, your mom, your auntie, your uncle, whoever. Yeah. Someone, someone worked for it, so appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, so when someone wants to steal something from my boys or from, you know, what I mean, I, I just find that so unsettling. You know? Yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I don't, what do you, what do you think we can do? What can we as you know? Because that's that's something that is an issue that we have. Is this this yeah. crime? Um, I don't know if it's black or black crime. Because I don't like that term, black or black crime. Yeah, I think I've never used it. Yeah, because uh, because if you live in a majority black, like I'm sure in Africa, you would never call it black and black crime. It'd just be crime, yeah. wouldn't it? It'd be just yeah, crime. Exactly. Yes, I mean to me, it's, it's youth on youth crime. Yeah, you know? I mean, like like there are white kids involved nowadays as well. Yeah. Uh, so um yeah i totally get that but you know in terms of like what you can do again going back to when when i was a kid i had things to do mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's just like you know, i mean like um um single parent my mum worked shifts so sometimes she'd be home when i got home sometimes she wouldn't sort of thing like you know yeah. but i had keys i got in made my food and whatever but i had youth clubs to go to yeah i had yeah, you know I mean, I I had things to do, sports to do, and things, and, and like organized sports. You know, mm. I mean, like my oldest son is very much into football. I mean, he's there now playing football. Oh. You know, he can. You know what I mean, he's 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 very focused. I always know where he is. Well, mm. for two reasons, I can also I can track his phone. So I always know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, but you know, it's like I don't I don't I don't worry about him too much because like he's focused on that. The youngest mm. one, on the other hand. He's not. He's not focused on any particular sport or whatever, mm -hmm. and he just wants to hang out with his friends. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if I say to him, well, you know, you, it'd be nice if they had somewhere to go. I mean, like they do have like a youth club once a week for like two hours on a Friday, but mm -hmm. that's that's it. I mean, back in my day, it was like if you wanted to join the youth club, you had to join the church. Yeah. So you, so the, the youth club was three days a week. And you had to go to church on Sunday or something, otherwise you wouldn't be part of the youth club. Mm. And then we'd have holiday camps, like we'd go away for two weeks in the summer. Yeah. We'd have trips and all and all this sort of stuff. It was just kind of like normal, you know. Mm. I mean, we even had we even had um, I don't know how you put it. I mean, like they wouldn't call it discos, but clubs for kids. Yeah. Now, now, now believe it or not, um, I mean, some of the older people can remember this, yeah, but there was, there was a club on Wardow Street in West End called Crackers. Now, Crackers, <laughs> Crackers, Crackers was a proper nightclub, yeah? yeah? But on Friday afternoon, it turned itself over to children. Okay. Okay. And no alcohol, obviously, but we used to have smoke machines and everything. They just like a proper disco nightclub sort of thing on Friday. Okay. Okay. Now, to get there on Friday afternoon, obviously, we had to bunk off school to get there. You know what I mean? <laughs> but kids from all over London bunked off school to go and get there. And it was yeah. a real mix. And like that's how you sort of made friends from all parts of London. Yeah. Now you look at you look at that and what it was like, and that's like what the 70s. And then you look back to Hyde Park with my son the other day, and it's mm -hmm. like you're not from the same area. So well, well, neither of them are from the same area, but they're gonna cause trouble because they you're not you're not from their area. 
Whereas mm-hmm. in my day, it was just like, wow, you're meeting people, girls, whatever, from yeah. different, from, different, from, areas, different, yeah. different, from different areas. And I, I honestly, I can never remember a fight or anything that it was just, everyone's just happy to be there. Yeah, yeah. everyone's just happy to be there. And like I said, I mean, you couldn't do that now. You know what I mean? I'm sure like, you know, the, the authorities wouldn't, wouldn't allow it. I don't know how they got away with it then, but it's something that, you know, a lot of people my age remembered it from all mm-hmm. parts of London, because it was like something really special. You, you, yeah. you, all, you all got together. You know, yeah. and you know there was other places we used to go where there was there was clubs on a Friday night, like you know, mm. sort of reggae clubs on a Friday night. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, I spit out some names in case people are listening, but we used to have like Copperston Road. We used to have Peckham Settlement. Um. Oh, there was Peckham, you know. <laughs> you, you, yeah, yeah. There was somewhere in Battersea Union, something another in Battersea. But there's all these places that we go on a Friday night as teenagers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it's mainly teenagers. Like you, know, you might get some in the early twenties there, but it's basically two teenager clubs. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, occasionally there was trouble. I wouldn't say there was never any trouble, but but compared to what I hear and see now, it's so different. Uh, yeah. But again, I say to, I say to everyone when everyone says to me that things are getting worse. I, I say to them, well, I'm not absolutely sure whether things are getting worse in every aspect. Is also the fact that we have what we have now, the internet, yeah. and er- and everything is instantly available. Yeah. News, you know what I mean, you're like, you know what I mean, it's gone from traveling fast to traveling instantly. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe things aren't quite as bad as we make it out to be, because you know people did get stabbed and whatever back in my day as well. But the the reason the reason these things happen are different to now. Yeah. You know, I mean, like no one carried zombie knives. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you carry a zombie knife, it's not for self-protection. Zombie knife, you know. What do you mean? <laughs> a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> Some zombies gonna come out of the corner. What? A zombie knife? <laughs> you, you, you get me? You know, what I mean? it's like you know, like if you if you're carrying if you're carrying a machete, it's not yeah. for self-defense. You know, like you're going out with the intention to do harm. Yeah. And why? I I mean, I really don't understand that. You know, it ain't even worth it. Is it? It's not even worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you know. I think there could be a few things like, like going back to the police thing where police pulling over like the black youth. I think if the if the youth, and I'm just scared because you you obviously sell clothing, so if the mm. youth would change the way they dress, if if we'd got maybe if we took up the Edwardian style, remember the Edwardian style or Edwardian, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. If we took up that style and like black young black men walking around in suit. Then again, you know what? That ain't gonna work either, man. We're still with black. No, we're still with having black. said that, having said that, you having said that, yeah. In my day, as a teenager, I mean, I started working from 16. Mm. And and um, and where I worked, I mean, I worked in the shop and I had to dress smart. Mm. You know, so, I mean, I I, I mean, I, I've seen my son, the first time I've actually seen this, I've seen my son be in handcuffs, yeah? yeah. I, know he's been, I know he's been stopped before and obviously he hasn't done anything and then he's um, walked away. I can honestly say, in my 60 years on this earth, I have never been stopped. Yeah. Not even drive. I've only been stopped once for driving, mm. and that's just like a funny story that I won't even bother with. But that yeah. that was kind of like you know what I mean it's like I understood why I got stopped, mm. and even that I got away with sort of thing. Like, but I've always dressed smart. Yeah, you know I mean? I've always you know what I mean it, it's you know what I mean even if I even if I'm in a t-shirt and jeans, I look as I look you know I mean? smart and respectful. The kids nowadays, you know what I mean it's like you know what I mean this. This sagging and whatever, like yeah. you know what I mean, looking like the wannabe in prison, addressing yeah. for prison. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm like, you're drawing attention to yourself. I mean, uh, as in my age now, I still, if I stand at a bus stop, I still tend to stand away from the bus stop. Yeah, purely, purely because of when I was younger. You know what I mean, if you're standing at a bus stop, they just think you're a thief. And it's yeah. not just the, it's not just the people standing there; it's the police as well, and they're mm-hmm. going to stop you because you look suspicious. Sus, as they used to call it back then, you know. Yeah, yeah. But even, even at my age, I still stand away. I mean, I've had someone. I'm walking through an, an alleyway by a church in in Richmond, like a posh, rich area of Richmond. I'm walking, and not, you know, there's black people there, but you know, it's it's a predominantly white area, and it's, mm-hmm. and it's a wealthy area. And I'm walking, I'm walking through like past the church. And this and this and this old white, I mean, I'm not young, you know, but this old white woman, <laughs> you know what I mean, she grabs her, she grabs her, her bag more tightly as I walk past her. Yeah, the classic. I mean, 
I'm 60 years old. I mean, you know, I'm like, I mean, it's, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got a grey beard. I'm not, I'm not your typical sort yeah. of mother. You know, <laughs> yet still, yeah, it's, it's, it, I don't know, it's just ingrained in them. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, like, it's, it's, it's really yeah. Makes you feel like you're just living with dummies, man. You're like, oh man, these guys are stupid, man. But then again, it's also a survival mechanism. Then you know, if they watch too much TV, and obviously the media perpetuates the idea that all black people are criminals, especially if they're yeah. between the ages of 14 and 25. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, that's it. That's that's the world we live in, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in terms of like what to do, it's just kind of like activities, man. You mean like they need activities. Mm. They need, oh, I mean, um, I mean like they need role models. I mean, I don't know if you saw, but I mean like a few hours ago, I put up a post on Facebook and I said, and it just simply said, um, um, name a black person you admire who's not an athlete or a, or a entertainer. And it's hard yeah. for people. It's really hard. <clears throat> the, the sort of names they come back with, <clears throat> excuse me, are um, historic names. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, it's like Marcus Garvey, Harry Selassie. Yeah. The, but if you, I mean, I, I have a look, a look at it again later on, but there was no one current or there was very few that, that are actually current. Yeah. I think the only person that's probably current is probably Barack Obama because he's like the most recent guy, you know what I mean? Even and that, again, I, mean, I would say someone like Marcus Rashford, man, I think he's doing a great job at the moment. Yeah. He's a, yeah, he's yeah. a footballer, he's an athlete too, but if you look at his mm-hmm. activism, yeah, then you can also say he's an activist as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton, he's trying his best yeah. at the moment as well. I yeah. think it's like when, when they get to a certain level, they feel that they can. I mean, it's like um, um, Jay-Z and Beyonce. It's like mm-hmm. they're not everyone. They're not everyone's cup of tea, but they are. They are becoming more radical. As they, yeah. I mean, it's like I mean, I was just listening to one of, one of the records a minute ago, and like mm-hmm. it's it's one of me says that the um, they they need me, I don't need them. <clears throat> I think it's like when they want him to sing at the sing at the sing at the, the to the um, Super Bowl, and he says like you know it's like like no, they need me, I don't need them. And you have to get to a certain level to be able to say that. You know, so there's quite there's quite a lot of black people out there who are successful and are doing their bit, but there's quite a lot of others who want to hide because yeah. they don't they don't want to upset their yeah you know, their money or their, or their, their, their yeah. paycheck. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, saying that saying that because I wanted to talk about because you don't have a problem with mixed relationships because a lot of yeah. people who think pro when you think of pro black a lot yeah. I'm going to quickly give a definition of it when pro black means we want to see black people on the same level as everybody else. Because let's be honest, yeah. we're so far behind in the race, it's unbelievable, on yeah. purpose. And then when you look at the countries that are majority black, they're like way behind as well. It's like, wait, that's a mm. big country. How come they're still behind? Because, yeah. you know, it's just not made, the, the system's not made for us. Mm-hmm. But obviously what pro-black isn't is anti-white. We don't, no one hates white people. We don't have time to hate white people. You know what I mean? I've never met, a, I've never actually really, I've never met a, white, a black person who didn't like white people from like, for, for the same reasons white people don't like black people. I've never met one ever in yeah. my life. I don't like him because he's white. I've never heard it. Never heard it. No. Yeah. No. No, so, no, no. So, so basically what right. I'm saying is you're all right with mixed relationships, I believe. I see you um, post it. You should be in love with everyone. Um, that's, it's no, kind of like, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, it's not really saying that because to, to be honest, I've never been in a mixed relationship. And okay. personally, personally, I think relationships are difficult enough yeah. without bringing race into it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, why would you want to complicate something that is already, that is already complicated? Yeah. I mean, I mean, when I was younger, I, I mean, I would say I was totally against it. As I've got older, I've seen sort of family members and what have you. And it tends to be, um, I won't say the more enlightened ones, but those who go who who like who go off to college, it's mm. usually college and university where 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 it starts, and yeah. like they've they've left the black home, they've gone to the college university, and they've found out that white yeah I mean like like white boys aren't as bad as they were made out to be, or white girls weren't mm. as bad as they were made out to be by their parents, for instance, or yeah. And then like yeah, and like like they come home with a a partner of a different race sort of thing like you know and I've seen that quite a bit but I think like you know, I mean older generations like myself it's like you either were or you weren't like you don't change mm. I mean like I've never changed I mean I've always been you know I for no 
for, well, not say for no reason. Again, so historic, I suppose, but I can remember when Roots came out. When Roots came out, I was at school. Mm. So I think, or just out of school, I think it was like late, mid-70s, 75, mm. 77, something like that. But when Roots came on TV, man, I'm telling you, that changed everything. Because up mm. until then, we had, in English, Black people had no idea about slavery or, mm. you know, there was nothing on TV. There, there were no books. And it was kind of like, wow, that's what they did to us. Mm. And it changed everything. You know what I mean? It changed everything for me and a, a, a lot of my contemporaries, a lot of my friends. You know, they all, they all kind of like, you know, you know they, they, had, they had a reason, I won't say to not like white people, but they had a reason to mistrust white people. Mm. You know? You know? Yeah. And I, I always think like, you know, it's like they're not, they're not all bad. And I'm not going to say that. And I've got, you know what I mean, sort of like white family members. Mm. And do you know what I mean? And white, well, I wouldn't say friends, but I mean, I've got yeah, people that I know. But um, like I said, I mean, I will say pro-black isn't, isn't anti-white. Mm. It just means that we still have to fight for some basic rights. Yeah. Which, had we been born white, would have been our birthright. Yeah. And that's it. You know, it's Shit. like, you know, it's, it's really that simple that like, we have to be pro-black. It's not a matter of wanting to be. We have to be because no one's, no one's promoting us. So we have to be pro ourselves. Yeah, you know, I was thinking, um, because I remember my mum was, was kind of the same actually, she didn't want me to get rid of it. First, it was may she get a black girl, and then she was like, <laughs> she don't know, because you know, because what happened when we were young, it was like she was like, she's about the same age as you, so mm. she was like, she saw real, she saw real racism towards her people, let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Yeah, we saw it as well, but we was like, like, I'm like 38, so you know, I'm in the 80s, I'm the 80s child, mm -hmm. so it was yeah. still there, but we didn't really understand it by the time we got. To an age where we understood it was kind of like, yo, that kid was racist back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so my mom started out basically like, um, don't bring no white people home, blah blah. And then she changed, mm -hmm. she flipped. She was like, because then, yeah. like, obviously in the nineties, then all these hood rat chicks started coming out, and all these girls started acting <laughs> like the American women. Yeah, and I was like, don't bring one of them home. And, and I felt like I was stuck in the middle, like, so who should I bring home? And I was like, I'm actually a Chinese girl or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's what it is. I think the older generation weren't really for him. Mm. But like I always explained that, like I was raised in England as well, yeah. around a lot of like European people, Caucasians, and I, I feel like that was probably the the main reason why I would have or went with white. Not because I feel like if I was raised in a place that was predominantly black, I think I would have more chance of being with someone who was black. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so, and and when you look at, I think there's like four million black people in England. I think roughly, that's not mm. that many. That's no. not a lot. So you look, you scurry and trying to find one. You're like, yo, what one? Yeah. And then you gotta weed out all the ones who are probably not like, let's say, lesbian. They're not like got bad characters. You know, they're not. They're not. You know, they're the not ones your mum won't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, you're left with like five, and they're already taken anyway because they're left for you know, they're, they're dating. <laughs> white guy too so it's like oh no yeah. I'm, stuck. I'm stuck with these guys <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm i'm on i mean i'm i i have this philosophy that i teach like my, like my kids especially yeah i will say like always always try and find the reason why someone does something mm. because like you don't have to agree with it and it's just but if you understand why they did it at least at least that 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 helps so it's like you know i mean i can understand why some do date outside their race. I mean, you know, back in back in my day, you used to get like rusters, especially. <clears throat> they would say they would say that you know it's kind of like um, um, I'm getting back at the white man by taking his woman. You know what I mean? Man. It's kind of like that. That I mean, that was like part of their philosophy. I don't know if it, don't know if it still is something like, but it was it was like part of that like being rustler. It's kind of like you know, if you're gonna have it a white sense. woman, yeah, it's like like they just getting back at the slave master sort of thing, like you know. And you know that 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 mentality is kind of like I mean that's just that's that's just out there. But like I say, if you go off to uni and you you suddenly start meeting people that you you know you never met before, sort of thing, things change. Mm. Yeah, you know, I can un I can understand why you think so. You know, it's like yeah, you know, um, it's uh, a black guy might say that you know white girls are different to black girls, I won't even go into like the where's and why's, but you know, he, he may come back and like, you know, or a Chinese girl, for instance, is more subservient or whatever. Mm, yeah. You know, it's like, 
there's things I can understand why people would do what they do, but yeah, because I understand it doesn't mean it's for me. You know, yeah. so I won't I won't say I approve or I disapprove. It's just hey, you know, you know, I understand where you're coming from. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like you know, you do you and. I mean, I do my pro black thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's cool. Like, my mum was, she said the same thing as well. She she could never date outside her race, you know. Not that she doesn't find him attractive, she's just like, it's not me. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that I, I understand. I said, it's just, like I said, relationships are difficult enough. Like I said before, it's kind of like, you know, you know, bringing race into it, you know, when they, you know, when, they, when I see people like, you know, like a mixed race couple and they talk about, when I was walking down the road, they, you know, I could see people staring at me and this, that, and the other. I think to myself, like, why would you want to put yourself through that? <laughs> you know, it's really, I mean, it's, I mean, it's hard enough as it is. It's really, like, really, they got the lights on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, why? Why would you want to do that? I mean, me, I mean, like, again, if you've seen, if you've seen like on Facebook, I mean, um, I'm a pretty big guy. I mean, I'm, I'm like six foot, I'm 18 stone. I do weightlifting, done it all the yeah, time. Yeah. I've always been big. So when so so when people talk about racism, I will say, well, you know what goes over my head, mate? Because like no one's ever been openly racist to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, because I'm a big guy, no one's gonna say anything to me. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's racism, racism to me, again, in the eighties, working in working in um not eighties, seventies even, one of my first jobs working in Peter Jones in Stone Square, mm -hmm. like you know, John Lewis partnership, working there. And um, one manager says to my manager, how's Nigel getting on? And um, they're both Irish, okay, which makes it even worse. They're both Irish. <laughs> and one manager says to her, how's Nigel getting on? And my manager goes, and I hear her, and she goes, he's working like a black man there. He's bloody marvellous. That's about, yeah. I mean, I, mean I was like 18. Racism. I was like 18. It's like, you mean, that, they didn't even think it was, they didn't think it was racist. <laughs> Yeah, they don't know. That's why they don't know. You know, I mean? you know what I mean? It's like this is this is like you know, I mean, seventy eight or something like. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, Nigel's around the back working like a black. You know what I mean? It's like, and they just thought they just thought it was funny. It's like I I stopped, yeah, you know, momentarily. You know, it's kind of like, well, I don't know. I just carried on just doing what I was doing. Like I just I, I didn't know what to do or say. It was just like it was just like really. I was like, I mean, it, I mean, it was racist, mm -hmm. but. It wasn't overtly racist. It wasn't yeah. directed. It wasn't directed at me. Yeah. You know? Is that subtle um, racism? Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, the only time I've actually had it directed at me, and looking back, I blame myself, and then that's because I uh, back in the old days. And again, a lot of people remember these days. Um, a lot of people used to sell life insurance, mm -hmm. and we'd go to certain areas and and knock on doors and sell life insurance. And I went through that phase myself. And um, we, we, at the end of the day, we, like, we, we promised to meet somewhere. And it was somewhere around about Bow in East London. And we were supposed mm -hmm. to meet. And basically, no one turned up. And I was kind of like, I was, um, I, was a, I was a bit like concerned as to where they might be. So there was a pub. And it's called the Bow Bells. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's an old saying that says, if you're born within listening distance of the Bow Bells, it makes you a cockney. Which is another yeah. story sort of thing. Okay, so it's a proper cockney pub. So I've, I've stuck my head in. It's the middle of the week. And I've stuck yeah. my head in just to look to see where my friends are in there. Some of them are black, some of them are white. Mm. And, or say friends, colleagues are in there. And I, and I stick my head in. And um, it was like, it was packed. And it was like wall-to-wall -wall white people. You know what I mean? Like men. It was like, it was like white men. It yeah. were mainly white men. You know, that's what I remember at the time anyway. But I stuck my head in. And I was kind of like, well... I ain't, I ain't going in there and I can't see anybody. So I just, I, I just turned around, came, came, came straight back out. As I, as I turned around, I heard someone say, that's right, nigga, get out. Oh, God. I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even look back. I just yeah, kept just going. I just, I, just, I just kept going. And then, you know what I mean, I found out later that it was a, um, a National Front headquarters and I was having a meeting. Oh, okay. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It was kind of like, so you're lucky. You know I mean? Wrong place. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky I got away with that sort of thing. Like, I just sort of like, you know, just look back, dash down the road to the train station. Yeah. So, but that is that is my two instances of racism in my 60 years on this planet and living in London. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's it's it, it's there, but I just think that like, the British are far more subtle. Yeah, yeah. 
Definitely. You know, it's like, yeah, they're not going to sort of like, you know, you see, you see your, your um, American Karens on video all the time sort of thing, <laughs> like saying, yeah, I mean, you black this and you black that. And I'm, yeah, but you don't really see it in England a great deal mm. because like, it's like they will get, they will get checked by other white people mm. and black people here, you know what I mean? Don't sort of like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It. Yeah, they're not, they're not gonna like stick a video up. You know what I mean? They're gonna, they're gonna, you know what I mean? They're gonna react. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. In America, they just film it and go, you know what I mean? It's like you're live streaming, you know. But here, I don't think they they, they get away with it. So it's just, it's just micro, micro, um, whatever they call it. Yeah, micro um, aggression. Uh, yeah, yeah, micro aggressions, micro. Yeah, it's just, it, yeah, it's not really in your face. Like I said, I mean, I've never really come across it a great deal. But however, you know what I mean, I know that it's there. It's obvious that it's there. And it's just like, you know, it's obvious when you when you walk into a room and the, and the conversation changes. Or, you know what I mean, it's it's obvious when sometimes people will say, um, you know what I mean, I'm sorry, Nigel, you know, I didn't mean to offend you. And I'm kind of like, sorry, what? I wasn't even listening to something like that. It's like, right, what did you say? And it goes, oh, yeah, never mind. I just said, I, I was just repeating something that someone else said. I've had yeah. those sort of instances, you know, but the, 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 the racist jokes and it I hate those racist jokes. There's always there's always somebody there who's about to say something where you know he's looking at you and he's like, I got a joke for you, you want to hear it? And I'm like, no, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> when anyone says that, when anyone's about to bring up a joke, I'm like, I don't I don't want to hear it. No, it's all right, because yeah. I know it's gonna be racist and I ain't got time for that. <laughs> yeah, again on Facebook recently, someone I think some comedian called Jim Davison. I don't know mm. if he died or whatever, or he said something. He said something racist recently. I can't remember. His name, his name came up, and it's like Jim Davison. And um, um, I made I made a comment in in on on the post, and I said to him, "Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember him. He's the one who had the black mate called Chalky, and he'd always talk about his black mate Chalky. He never saw him, but he always talked about his black mate Chalky. And you think to yourself back Chalky, now, it's like, yo. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like. Dude, that was racist. But it's yeah. like, this, this was on TV. This is on TV in the 80s and 70s and 80s. You know I mean? don't, don't you remember Love Thy Neighbor? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 You know, it, it's yeah. like, really, I mean, I tried watching something the other day with um, um, an old comedy, Sydney something, another, an old white comedian. Um, used to do the Carry On movies, Sydney something. But I tried watching this, this, this program of his. And yeah, you know, it's it's white people. You know what I mean? Like it's just a, a comedy that, that I used to watch when I was a kid. But when but I got into like five minutes, and it's just kind of like, now nah, this is you know like they're you know I mean like they're talking about like you know what I mean like the the black neighbor down the road. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I'm like, no, nah, I can't watch this. I think so. I can't believe I used to watch this. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like just a normal comedy that was on TV all the time. Yeah. But there was racism then. You know, yeah, and it's yeah. like. I mean, as a kid, I said we didn't, we didn't even notice it, man. I think there was more racism in British TV than there was ever in American TV. I, yeah. I, I just get the feeling that, because, like, if you look at, like, Love Thy Neighbor and stuff like this, mm. you know, you used to see, you used to just go in on black people. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, I don't like to include up with the American TV, man, but I just can't imagine that we had the same sort of stuff in America, you know? That's crazy. No, no. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm again, I'm old enough to remember... <laughs> and your mum, your mum remember black and white minstrels, like white people with black face. That was on yeah. TV, man. That 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 was on TV, and I used to watch that. You know what I mean? You know what I, mean? I remember I was like that. That would be like the sixties or something like. But I can still remember that. You know? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. So I just think now, like looking back, I just think I'm in a in 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 a good position to have a um, overall view of. Mm pro-black and racism and like I said in the beginning I just want people to not to to just basically what do you say be aware but like just um provoke thoughts in them as in to say like you know it's not you may be in a good job in a good position sort of thing like you know what I mean but you as as a black person but you still need to represent you still need to comment you shouldn't be afraid of commenting because of what your colleagues or friends may think of you and so forth. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I said, I mean I've got to that stage now where it's like, you know, I mean, I okay. stick my name in it. I'm Nigel. This is me. I'm sure people have seen it sort of in like at work or whatever. 
and yeah, yeah and and yeah, and to, to be honest, I mean, I show it to some people at, yeah, I mean, at, at, at work in the past, but I'm mm-hmm. um, like, um, yeah, this is you know, like I said, I'm not anti white, I'm just promoting black people to do better, to have more, to support their own, you know, the old black pounds and all that sort of thing. Like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I see lots of pe- people out there trying, <clears throat> but um, it, it doesn't really come um, to fruition greatly, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, again, <clears throat> it's like, I mean, I look at, I, I look at my website and I, I, think, I think my website <clears throat> is very good compared to others in terms of content. Like some of the others I see are like real sort of like basic content and, you know, they'll put, put up a black fist or something and expect someone to buy the T-shirt. Mine, yeah. mine, mine tend to have messages and they're varying messages and some, some are even numerous. But this is your website. All oh, right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, some, my, my, some of mine are even numerous. But I mean, like that first bit there about being pro-black, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, it's just like I said, pro-black doesn't mean anti-white. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the first thing you see. It's like, I don't want to put anybody off looking through because they, they think, so. oh, it's just another, you know what I mean, black website. It's not, it's not just about that, you know? And, um, but having said all that, in terms of, um, in terms of sales, you know what I mean? It's like, this, I I would expect more, especially when, <laughs> especially with the amount of content I have and the amount of people who say they like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like they don't tend to black people don't tend to purchase as much. I mean, I I have other websites where I sell different products. I sell humorous products. I sell jewelry, for instance, mm-hmm. and that's that's a wide audience. That's just that's you know selling to everybody, and with those i sell far more you know so i've got a little bit of jewelry on here but i've got like an actual jewelry website yeah. and that does that does very well yeah but this this is i wouldn't say this is a hobby but and and it cost it cost me money to keep the website up there yeah, sure, sure. but 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 i think myself it's worth it even, even, even if i made no sales i would still do this yeah, just, yeah, simply, just, yeah. just simply because i want people to yeah, you know, be engaged and to and to see, yeah, you know, like, like see some of the messages and so forth, like you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's it. It's I'll good, say it's, it's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. All right, so uh, just a couple more things I want to ask you, um, or what you think, anyway. Get your point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of uh, course. We need. Um, do you agree that we need a, a a black beauty standard among our females? And what I mean by that is. It's time to do away with all this weave and the, this hair and all this crazy stuff <laughs> and try and become more natural. Or do you think it's all right? What do you think? Oh, oh no, 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 definitely not. Definitely not. You know what I mean? I mean, yes, I mean, yeah, I believe a woman, you know what I mean? I would prefer if they didn't wear so much makeup. Can't say none because, like, you know, what I mean? you know like women often say, I don't do it for men, I do it for myself, to make myself yeah, feel better. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I can't really, you know what I mean, fair enough, but like, do you have to have, you know what I mean, three inch long eyelashes, you know what I mean? Can they just not be normal length? You know, that sort of thing, you know? And as for hair, like I said, you know what I mean? Yeah, I prefer natural hair, but yeah. again, you have to you have, you have have to look at the reasons as to why they do it. They're never going to tell you that they, they have straight hair because they want to look white. Yeah. They're gonna say they want to have straight hair and whatever because it's easier to manage. Mm-hmm. It's a, there's there, there's a thousand reasons why they do it, but none of them are because they're trying to have white stat or they're they're, they're being um, they like white standards yeah. are affecting them. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, like they're trying to. You know, no, no woman's gonna say that. No. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 a great idea. I totally agree. And like I said I I hate all that weave and this that and the other and yeah, you know I mean like it fought you know falling off everywhere and it's like the bathroom's always full of it. <laughs> trust me, I, I know. You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> That's you know a mean? rat. That's <laughs> a little rat in the house. Like, what is that? Is your wig? What are you got a wig on for, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean a, a, a little more. Um, um, I'm low key now. I've just heard the front door, so I think my wife's come home. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chop you in the back of your neck. <laughs> but right. um, 
but nothing she doesn't know already. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have to let them know. I'm always at my sister's as well. I'm like, hey man, guys, look, like, because I saw it with my daughter, really, because my daughter, my daughter's like seven now, and a couple of years ago, she was all like, yeah, I want straight hair, I want it to be long, and she started trying to put all this stuff in, like she yeah. wanted those extensions, and I, and I, that was the way the indoctrination was starting. I was like, yo, your hair's fine, right? Is you look good. Yeah. Don't let all this other stuff, like, you look different, but you look good. Don't let the rest of the stuff worry you. And now yeah. she likes her hair, so. Yeah, it's all your Beyonce's and so forth, you know what I mean, with yeah. their wigs and stuff, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, I mean, they do it because they want to to be popular with a bigger audience. Yeah. But, like, but a young black child seeing that doesn't realise that. Yeah. They just think that's normal. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like that's 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 a beauty standard, you know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm. like it's it's a real shame, man. It's a real shame. Yeah. But you know, but like I said, no, no black woman's gonna say I do it because I want to look more like more like white people. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like they're not they're not they're, they'll make any other excuse excuse or reason, but they'll never admit that. Yeah. And it's just it's subjective, not subjective, it's subconscious. It's like you know, they don't they don't realize. Oh. And even if they do, they're offended if you point it out. So yeah, that's you can't true. really win. No. <laughs> Uh, what I did want to point out is that going mm-hmm. back to because you said something about the the few um, primaries who are doing some stuff. I think they're not doing hardly enough. They need to do more. I think every black person who makes it, and the only thing is, you know, the thing is what's what annoys me the most. That are prominent black people are always in sports, so the time to sponsorship, ordering like mm-hmm. acting, so the time to probably sponsorship, or, or the chance to get in another job. You know, yeah. if we could just start our own companies and then make the companies great and then go on like like Elon Musk, start a company like Elon Musk, and you can yeah. mess around like this guy on Twitter and stuff and say whatever you want and people listen to you. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. But if you're but an actor, is- if you're always if you're on the white man's payroll, whether you're a footballer or, or if you own a football club, that's something else. But yeah. if you're a footballer, yeah. you're on somebody's payroll, you can't yeah. talk if they say you can't talk. And that's exactly. it. So um, yeah. I mean Shaq, I mean Big Shaq said the best man, or someone said said, said the best about him when they said like oh, Shaq is really rich, man. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and he's like, yeah, and he goes, well, yeah, he is, but 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 he works for a white guy who's really wealthy. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a big difference between wealthy and rich. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. yeah he, may, he may have all these Ferraris and all this sort of thing, and you know what I mean? But like like he's 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 wealthy boss owns islands and things and yeah, yeah exactly. he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't shout about it as, yeah. as much you know what I mean if, if if at all so again it's like you know black standards you know what I mean it's like yeah. you know but yeah, probably don't even know the boss at it you don't even know the boss you've never seen him you just know that yeah. he's put somebody into the club and then whatever I mean like my son supports Chelsea. And 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 he and he didn't know that the owner of Chelsea cannot come over here to watch matches anymore. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like I mean, when they played in Portugal the other day, he mm. was there, but he can't yeah. come to England to watch his own team. Yeah. You know, because, because I don't feel I can't remember what it was. It was taxes or something or it's something. Yeah, yeah, something happened. I can't remember what it was now, but yeah, but he hasn't been able to watch his own team for over a year or so. You know, what I mean? like, like my son supports him, didn't even know that. You know, what I mean, yeah. and it's like. Yeah, it's I said like like wealthy, wealthy is not rich, man. You know what I mean? So, give you a good example. Again, I put it on Facebook a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, a black guy wins 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 a lottery, wins wins with thirty thousand dollars on the 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 um lottery. Mm-hmm. Okay, he then spends twenty thousand dollars on a gold chain. Okay, <laughs> twenty out of thirty. Yeah, he goes back to the same shop to go and buy another ticket, mm-hmm. and while he's there. He gets mugged <laughs> of his chain. <laughs> the circle of life. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. It is like that, though, isn't it? Really? No, That's it. No, it is, it's like, what can you say to that? You know what I mean? It's like, you know I mean? 30,000 spends 20,000 on the gold chain. Yeah. You know I mean? like, he ain't, he isn't, he isn't no sort of like, he's not, he's not rich or whatever, so he can just afford it. It's just like, he's just an ordinary working Joe doing, doing the lottery. And he got lucky, and he spent twenty on the chain, and then he got mugged from the chip of the chain in the same shop they bought the ticket. Yeah, going. yeah. They were watching I mean, him. that's just so <laughs> ironic. Man. You know what I mean? You know, saying that though, um, black people need to really start getting into things like investing to invest in even the crypto community. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know much about that, but you should mm-hmm. try and get on the ball a little bit, especially for your kids. You should let them know and let them get into it because in the future, if they buy now, for example, and learn it now, in the future yeah. they'll be. Yeah, they'll be they'll be good to go. So that's important that black people need to start really getting must, food in. Must be my sixteen year old. He's into that already. Like he yeah. buys 
he, he, he buys things with crypt with, with cryptocurrency and yeah. you know I mean? yeah he, he's he's a bit secretive about it sort of thing like but you know but so I'm, kind, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like you know what I mean? you go son you know what I mean? it's like you know like it, it is it is the future you know what I mean so you know yeah so yeah, good yeah. on him definitely um and that obviously mm-hmm. saying that too black people need to start doing jobs where you know they need to move away because like i've said to my kids i don't well i said to my wife and i said i don't want my kids doing no sports <laughs> not, not because I don't like I like them to do sports yeah. I wanted to do it yeah. as fun but I don't want them to take it serious like me I tried to be a musician for the longest time I wasted the best part of 20 years trying to make it in the industry that was was with the odds stacked against me and I've already took those 20 years and studied to be I don't know a pilot or something or, or mm-hmm. engineer you know I probably wouldn't be doing this <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a good job, though. Yeah, I mean, you're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm doing all right, but I'm doing all right because I've been like, you know, how do you say, I've been uh, just just basically nicking a living, basically, like just coasting through life, trying to get what I can from, from yeah. what I have. Exactly. You know what I mean? But, but um, I look at the, like, the last 20 years and I'm like, man, I can't believe I tried. No one told me, you know, and that's one of the things that happens yes. when you don't have a when you don't have a father around or someone who's that is that to you. is so so you don't get told. I mean, like, I mean, that for me, that is so frustrating when when my boys like ignore my advice because mm. I will say to them, "I'm your father. I will not give you bad advice." Yeah, you know what I mean, I I I will say to them, "You know what I mean." The best way to learn is through is is not through your own mistakes, but through someone else's mistakes. Yeah, yeah. So I can tell you what I've seen, and I can advise you what to do. Yeah. You know, what I mean? and I was just like, I wish someone had told me. Yeah. You know what I mean, just you know, just simple things about driving, and yeah, you know I mean, and I mean, I wouldn't even say about girls and so forth, but you know, there's there's so many things that I wish I had someone to tell me when I was like those formative years, like like mid teens. You know what I mean, like like yeah. mid teens. Late teens, especially because like your body goes through a lot and a lot, you know, a lot of things happen, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, I'm kind of, um, I'm more, I wouldn't say lenient, but I'm more understanding because they are boys than say my wife is mm-hmm. going, going through this age because I know what I was up to. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think to myself that, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not bad. It, it, it's not, not everything is their fault. You mean it's just circumstances. Mm. <clears throat> so excuse me. It's just um. Oh, don't worry. It's not wine. It's um grape juice. I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> that's a big glass of wine, man. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, like, it, I mean, for teenage teenagers in general, it's it's hard. But I mean, like boys, they just need direction, and it's just so hard to find. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, you're, you're lucky if you have like a good teacher, for instance. I mean, like my, my, well, both of them actually, both both boys have gone to schools where they have black male teachers. Yeah, yeah great. In my days, didn't didn't exist. Nah, <clears throat> me too. I mean, I mean like my best friend, he's um, um, I mean, he's a teacher. Mm. So again, I'm lucky in terms of like, I can always ask him for advice or, or like you know, books to read or that sort of thing. Like you know, yeah, yeah it's it's you. And and like he'll even talk to my boys for me on occasions. And again, it's, it's that sort of like that that mentoring, you know, having sort of yeah. You know, even if the father's not in the house, you know, I mean, women need to understand that boys need mentors. You know, yeah, it's like, sure. You know, I mean, single single black women tend to mother their baby. You know, simply really, yeah, yeah. I was right, mother their babies. I mean, like like they make. You know, I mean, they they try to to sort of smother them. And it's yeah. like protect them and keep them home and you know what I mean. Whereas yeah. like I'm like my boys, it's always been, you know, it's like rain, sun, shine, doesn't matter. You know what I mean? I've got pictures with them outside in the snow, I've got pictures with them outside yeah. in the rain. In the like, I've got pictures with them covered, yeah, covered in mud and whatever. I've got things where it's like, you know, like you hear me saying, Don't tell your mother. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's all like building building character and for them not to be afraid, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, like when those boys approach my boy in Hyde Park, I mean, he's, he's, he's 16, he's six foot and he's 14 stone. So he, he's, he's, he's a big lad, yeah. but, and he can look after himself. However, he didn't respond. He, you know what I mean? It's like him, him and his three, you know, him and his other sort of five mates, they could, you know what I mean? Like 
they you know, they could have responded, but they didn't. Yeah. And I was, and, and I said to my son, I don't know if that's because like you were the example sort of thing, like, but I hope that's the hope that's the reason why. Because it's like, you know I mean, it's like you, there's no point li- losing your life over a hat. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, okay, you may look at them and think to yourself, you know what, I can knock him out if I, if I want. But, mm. you know, he may have a weapon, or they did have weapons, they showed him the weapon. And yeah. plus, he, he never did tell me how many of them there was. I know that he, he was him and his five friends. He didn't tell me how many and they they were sort of thing like But whatever, I just think to myself, like, I like to think that it's because of the way he's been brought up, is the way he reacted, you know, he yeah. acted sensible in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, where some kids were like the kid the following day. Again, you don't know what happened, but the kid the following day might have reacted in some way, and that's why he got chased down. Yeah, actually, I remember um, when I was in Thailand, actually, that was some guy, uh, he was a bit more one of those rebel guys, and he, and, he, and he reacted, and then he ended up getting killed, man. So, yeah, but reacting doesn't make sense sometimes. Sometimes it's best to just say, you know what, I'll live to fight another day. It's just stuff, it's material yeah. stuff, I don't care. Yeah, there you are. I mean, I, I would say to my son, the bigger you are, the bigger target you are. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, I mean, I said, I'm 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 a big guy, so like I totally understand it sort of thing, like, and it's, you know, it's, um, yeah, so like, you know, just because you're big. It doesn't mean nothing. Not, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, no. you know, I mean, I've always found, you know, when I was, when I was younger that, you know, I mean, like, um, big guys tend to not know how to fight because they yeah. don't have to. Because they don't have to, they just sort of like they just they just big and intimidating. Yeah. But they don't actually know how to fight. You know what I mean? So yeah, and you know I mean some some people do realize that and they will go for you. That like you think to yourself like they're not gonna go for me because I'm bigger than him. But some 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 people realize that you may not yeah. know how to fight, or they may just be more aggressive, or they may just have a weapon. Yeah. You know? So I said, yeah, just um and walk away, man. Like, there's no shame in walking away. Yeah. You know? Okay, so. The last question or last topic for today would be, yeah. obviously, you know about the Windrush uh, generation. You wasn't in there, though, which you had the Windrush. You're not from, was you born? The thing is, I heard there's people who were born in England, but still, always the people who came over when they were young. How did that work, Windrush? That it was, it, no, it was those who came over. So, like, okay. like, yeah. And generally, I think it's generally when they came over without their parents. So, it's like they came over, their parents came first, and then they came after. Yeah. So, I think those, those are the ones that sort of like slipped through the net, as it were. Yeah. So I think, I think my dad would have went back then, would have sent him back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so what's your view on like, like black people thinking, you know what, let's go back to our home. Let's go back to, are you from Trinidad or Tobago? Um, um, Barbados. Barbados, yeah. I'm, mm. I'm Jamaican, obviously, with my mm. parents. And then you know, obviously got the Africa countries. What, mm. What's your view on that stuff? In what way, sir? In what way? Do you think, do you think it would be... Uh, Maybe time that we decide to say, you know what? Why? Why do we stay here? Why do we stay oh, in this country? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, again, I mean, yeah. As a good example, I'll take myself. I mean, personally, I mean, I mean, um, my mother's passed, but my dad still lives in Barbados, mm-hmm. and I think they have having been there lots of times. I mean, I think to myself like, you know, I would, I would love to live there. Mm-hmm. However, my wife has five younger sisters. Mm-hmm. And her mum and everyone, all, all the rest of the family, but a huge family. Whereas I don't have a huge family here, so sort of my wife has a huge family, yeah. and she would never, and she would never leave England. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just Stop. like that's it. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, okay. Uh, again, I understand why. May not, mm-hmm. may not, may not, may not agree in, entirely, sort of you know, But I understand, as it were, like you know. So you know, so like going back home is kind of like. For someone who's like me, who's born here, what is home anyway? Yeah. You know what I mean? I like Barbados. And I'd like to try to live there. But the reality is, I don't know if I could. I mean, it's a small island. Mm. There's not much to do. There's not much employment, et cetera, et cetera. If I went back there, I would have to be self-employed. There's no way, you know, I mean, I couldn't, you know, there, are, there are no jobs sort of thing, like, you know? So, like, it's, 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 it's a nice thought. But the reality is, you know what I mean? We have, I mean, like my parents, me, my children, my grandchildren. Yeah, you know, I, in, in my lifetime, it's like four generations here already. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, like it's like, like my older daughters. They both have kids. You know what I mean. And it's like, um, yeah. I mean, like they're they're English. I mean, they're Black British. You know yeah, what I mean? the classic you know? Black so British. Like, yeah. So it's like, where do you where do you really go? It's like, I mean, that's why I think people feel so 
away when they said like you know like go back home or you know yeah. it's like, like it's well, I'm like, home yeah it's <laughs> like yeah you know, right right home South London mate you know what I mean it's like you know I'm more I'm more London than you know what I mean I mean I even talk more London than most people that I know you know what I mean yeah. it's like, you know so it's like this is this is it you you just you just you know you're like you may not accept me but I'm here you know what I mean and at the end of the day we're you know what I mean it's yeah it's, it's, I can't remember who said but someone famous said so saying on the lines of um in a few generations the whole world's going to be brown yeah you know what I mean it's kind of like you know it's it's you know I mean like the, the whites are becoming the minority and I think that's what they fear that they can see it I think they've yeah, always, they've always been the minority though. I think there's like, I think when you split it up, a million of the 7 billion people on the planet are white and that's it. And the rest are occupied by everyone else who's our shade mm-hmm. or a bit lighter yeah. or everything yeah. in between. Yeah. So yeah. they're all in the minority. It's not a bad thing. I mean, it's not a good thing. It's mm-hmm. not a bad thing, you know. Everyone's got their place and, you know, it'll be sad when the, it'll be sad when the oppressors are gone, you know. We don't want the oppressors <laughs> to go. We need them, you know. We need them. <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna tell us we can't do stuff <laughs> you know who's gonna tell on us <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it's motivation isn't it you know what I mean yeah. like I, will, I mean I will do better I'll show them you know what I mean you know so yeah so I get that I get that as well man I get that indeed you know so yeah, yeah so that's so that's my like I said you mean I said I'm I'm just that I mean I I, I think I'm very um, I wouldn't say young for my age but I think so like I, I mean I've seen a lot so I've got a lot of different perspectives and I still think that so like I'm very active. I mean, I can remember my dad at 60, all he talked about was retirement sort of thing. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, he was very different to myself and some yeah. of my friends as well. You know, like some, some of my friends, are, they're just sort of like, you know, sort of like 40 and they're, they're, they're sort of like life is over. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, whereas, whereas others... Uh, like myself and it's like they still do sports and they still they still want to be active and they still they still want to do something for the community yeah you know and it's just like I mean I you know, I mean like whatever your skill is I mean I don't I mean I just think to myself my skill is uh, writing I can I can I can you know I, I do poetry I do logos I do all sorts of stuff and I try to like focus on a niche which mm-hmm. is being being pro-black like I said, having said that, I've got other stuff where I sell jewelry as well. And it's like, you know, but those those are all sort of like sidelined. But my passion is pro black. And like I said, even if I made no money from it, mm-hmm. I would I'll still continue to do it because it's 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 necessary. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, when someone makes when someone makes a comment and they just simply say something on the lines of, wow, that was so well said. You know what I mean? Like that means you know what I mean they don't need to buy anything. They you know I mean? just just that one comment on my Facebook said like that was so well said. Yeah. That means that means yeah, you know, that means a lot to me, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, mean, it, mean, it means that I got my point across to one person at least. You know what I mean? It's like one person understood what I was trying to say. Yeah, right. And, and there's nothing more important than that. Awesome. Okay. So, that's an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's right now yeah um i'll give you the floor man let us know where we can find you okay mr nigel williams he's got like the same name as my mom but <laughs> <laughs> actually i don't think so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> joking. But, but yeah so i mean it's um you saw the website earlier like the website is literally very simple it's pro black market yeah. that's it if you just type you don't even need a dot you just type type that in it comes up in the search straight away, pro black market. Obviously, mm-hmm. I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. Again, just type in pro black market, I'm there. Um, like I said, just selling clothing, etc., some jewelry, bits and pieces, all relating, all relating to um, um, being pro black. And um, yeah, I mean, I mean what I would say, like, I love my black people and, and I do it for, for, for my people. You know what I mean? It's like, there's you know the monetary aspect of it trust me isn't isn't worth you know, like like you know what I mean it's like for the time I put in you know what I mean like the the, the 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 money I get back isn't a great deal you know what I mean yeah. but it's not about the money and I said I'll I'll just do it because I enjoy doing it and yeah I just like it's just it's just a great way to engage with like-minded people yeah sure you know? and that's how I found you as well so like, like um, yourself yeah 
<laughs> yeah, keep, keep it up, man. Cool. Keep, you know, even if you don't make it, you're like, I'll do this and it's it's free, you know, it's voluntary. <laughs> Um, I don't get paid anything, but I like doing it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. I get to meet people like yourself, and a lot. I spoke to so many different people from all kinds of different backgrounds. I had a guy last week when he was just completely not in my spectrum, and he was like some real, real T, I don't know, banker, billionaire. <laughs> and I was like, who's this geezer? <laughs> <laughs> but, but he was all right, you know. I was speaking to him, I was like, yeah. all right, and good. Yeah. So you got yeah. some people like this, anyway. Yeah. Yo, Mr. Nigel, okay. I just got one I last question. You like football? Me. You like football? I watch, well, yeah, yeah, well, I know. You follow a team? <laughs> you follow any teams? Oh, oh you're going to love this. I'm, I'm, I was born across the road from West Ham Football Ground. Oh, okay. okay. And, and of course, everyone supported West Ham. So I just picked a team. It's like, bear in mind, this is in the 60s, yeah? I picked yeah. a team in the 60s and I've stuck with them ever since. And believe it or not, it's Manchester City. Oh, no! <laughs> so it's all paid up now. Look, see? That means it took a long time. Yeah. It took a long time. Sometimes but I've, like, I've stuck with them since the 60s, man. You know, you know, like, obviously I'm an Arsenal fan, so uh, you know me. And um, like I've seen, when I started supporting them, they were just about to start winning things. So it was like the yeah. 89, 89. Yeah. So just, yeah. Like, it would have been that season when we won the double... Mm -hmm. uh, beat Liverpool, and since then, like we started winning, 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 and now we're just losing. That's it. So we're like the Manchester, <laughs> Manchester City of old. <laughs> uh, all goes around the so in, in in cycles, man. In circles, you know what I mean? So let's hope, let's hope. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna, that, if it's going to do that, we're going right to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> they have, right. have their time again. Anyway, yeah, man. really appreciate right. it. Man. Thanks, man. So I say, we'll bye, stay in touch. Good. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, I said about, I said about, I mean, I'm on your so like, like Facebook and things like that. I mean, so, um, yeah, I mean, now, now, now that we've done this, I think I, I will sort of like spend more time actually like looking at some of the interviews because I, I didn't want to look at the interviews until I'd spoken to you. So I didn't want to make, yeah, um, yeah an, an impression as it were, something. But this has been fun, man. Appreciate yeah. it. It's, it you know, be, it's, actually, might have a spot for you on here too, man. You might want to come on a bit often because obviously you got the black message and this is, yeah. this is made for you. And yeah, I said like like we'll keep in touch and like if we can get co collaborate in some way. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm definitely up for that, man. Definitely up for that. You know what I mean? But I said I just do it for the love of it, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's nice to see someone else do, you know, who has the same sort of uh, mindset. Yeah. You know? Cool, man. All okay. right. Then. All then right. So I'll catch up with you on the on the rebound. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We'll, we'll speak soon. I said I love this, enjoyed it, and yeah, man, best of luck to you in the future, man. Yeah, man. All right. Thank you. All Thank right. you, man, Nigel. We'll catch up. Right. See you in a bit. Yeah, we'll do it. Bye. Bye now.